Hey, KD2ETP here. So this is a 991A again. And uh, like I mentioned that I bought this for um, the fact that it had HF and 2 meters and 440. So um, one thing that was nice, I, I got the RT system software and you just need a USB-A to USB-C um, cable, which I already had for another radio that I had. It was actually for my ICOM 7200. I used to use that. So it married very well with the um, the computer. I put the RT systems, I downloaded it from the internet. It was like $23, relatively cheap. I filled out the program long at log and I got pretty much everything programmed in here. You can see these are all um, local repeaters on memory. And um, But one thing I did notice when I programmed I thought that I had the tone on but I noticed on all these that the tone is off so if I put the tone back on I'm not sure if I can hit that repeater I don't know where that one is offhand I put some of the local ones around here I have I'm running off a disc cone so so we'll turn this one on here and see this one I should be able to hit yeah I get full strength there Oop. But anyways, I just want to show you what I did to um, to do that. It's pretty simple to get the RT Systems software running on your computer here. And let me see here. Uh, uh, well, I'm gonna have to do this later. So come over here I got my uh, FT 991 uh, programmer so here's a blank slate this is what I got when I first got it so what I did when I initially hooked this radio up or before I hooked this radio up I downloaded the software and then I went through and I actually made a list of everything I made the whole program that I wanted to put in here so let me go over here to file, and then uh, I think it was, um, no, it was this one here. Oh, okay, so go to open, file, open. Ah, here we go. So Pro 1 is what I put, which was short for Program 1, and I was just playing around. So you see, I went through, and before I even hooked the computer up to this, I... Um, made my whole program long with all the repeater, repeaters and so it's showing that I have tone squelch in here for some reason but for some reason it's not coming up so I'll have to take a look and see what's going on with that but anyways I got this all set up and so everything was set up on here so after I did that I saved this I went up here to file and I put save as over here and um, I saved it as radio or, or pro one. So let's go back here. All right. So I got all these open. So I'm going to do all, close all these. Pro one was the one that I did. This is the FT91. So, so you got the radio hooked up. So you go up here to communications. And the first thing you always want to do is get the data from the radio here. And it'll tell you to insert the USB jack, blah, blah, blah. Make sure everything's good. And I know everything's good because I've done it before. And now it says, um, get data from radio. So it's going through now. And I believe, uh, there we go. Now it's starting to move. So it takes a little bit to get all the data from the radio. The only other thing that you need to worry about is if the um, what port that you're coming into here. And I'm sure you've watched another, a lot of other videos on the programming. I think mine's COM6 or 4 or whatever it is. I forget what it is on this radio. I actually selected the wrong one first and uh, because, you know, I have this little mice, mouse um, plug, um, receiver plug, plugged in on this side. So it was picking up that too. Um, it only gives you so many options depending on how many things you got plugged in. I don't have a lot plugged into this, so there was only two options, one or two. I chose this one first. It obviously didn't go through because I 
um, was on the wrong one. I chose the other one, which, I, like I said, I think this was five and six or whatever it was, or four and five, or blah, blah, blah. I chose that. So now I'm still getting the um, waiting. I went up to communications again, like I said, and I, I'm downloading from the radio first before I dump anything into that radio. So we're at 28% there. It takes a little bit with this radio. So a few things I've noticed about this radio. Um, one, it's, um, you know, it's one of the more complicated radios to uh, get to know than um, the other ones. Like the 710 was easy. And to be quite honest with you, when it comes right down to it, getting on to um, HF was fine on this. I was able to... Um, I got it hooked up to the 40 meter double bazooka. I tuned into a frequency and I was able to make contact and they said I sounded good on the radio. So easy enough. But um, there's just a lot on this radio and a lot of settings and whatnot. And it's one that actually, I believe, unfortunately, that um, unless you want to spend a lot of wasted time just going through things, you kind of got to look at the man. I, well, I won't say that. You don't have to look at the manual, but it is extremely helpful that you um, look at the manual. And I found that instead of fumbling my way through and going through a bunch of things and making a bunch of mistakes, it was just easier when I wanted to do something to look it up on the menu and to, um, you know, obviously. Uh, um, look at through look at it through the the manual as opposed to just fumbling my way through um, different settings and whatnot. So um, the RT system software. Okay, so now I'm done. I just read it from the radio. Everything's on here from the radio. So then the next thing you would do is um, go to my Pro Run. I clicked on that one. Oh nope, sorry, wrong one. Uh, I'll have to go back over here to File. Oh come on. Oh wrong one. Oh, wait a minute. They're all there. So let me see what I got here. All right. So let me close some of these. Sorry, I was clicking the wrong button. So this is FT991A on Title Three. This is what just um, downloaded from the radio. And as you can see, there are no tones here for some reason. So what I'm going to do is go back over here to File, go to Open, and my Pro 1 right here. I'm going to open that. Open. This is where I programmed all the repeaters. I got the 10, started up here with the 10 megahertz, then the um, 6 megahertz, or uh, yeah, 10 meters, 6 meters, and then the 2 meters and the 440 down at the bottom. So I put that all in there. So now I'm going to try this again. And you can see that right here, and I'm not sure why this happened, but because this is a simplex, the first one, there's no tone mode there. But the rest of them, there's tone squelch on. You know, this 52.52 is also a simplex frequency, so there was no tone there. But I went through, I did program some of those in, and there are some repeaters that don't have a tone too. So, so what I'm going to try and do now is that I'm on that one. I'm going to, uh, let me see here, I'm going to close this. And close this. Oh no, crud. <laughs> of course, I'm doing it all wrong for the video, but, anyways. So, I'm going to go back. I got to open this back up again. I want to get um, Pro 1 here because that's the one that I set up for this. That's got all the tones on it. And there, now you can see I'm back on that one again. I got the tone squelch and anything. So, what I'm going to do is send the data to the radio up there. Go to communications again. I've just, I did the download from the radio so that I got that. And now I'm going to send it to the radio and I'm on the Pro 1 up here. So let's see. And of course the screen comes up and it tells you to insert the USB jack, turn on the radio, blah, blah, blah. So that's all done. Um, and, you know, you can read through this and it tells you to make sure your baud rate's this, uh, right. And it actually tells you the menu item, menu item 29. But I know that's all good because I've used this before. So I'm going to click OK. And there we go. So now we're going to try and dump this in here again. And um, when I scroll through, it'll be interesting to see if the tone modes come up. Because they did not the last time, so... And they should have. There was no reason they shouldn't have. Uh, they were all programmed in when I did the the program for this, the Pro 1 there that you see. 
So this takes a little bit of time. When you get to the end, it'll tell you to shut off the radio and turn it back on to finish the um, download, and then you should be all set. So uh, pretty simple, this RG system software. Uh, I like it. I'll play around with it more. I went through, did a real quick one. I'd like to leave some more gaps and stuff in case I'm out and about and I want to add in some spots. I don't know. We'll see. But there are more that I want to add. There's some beacons, um, 25 megahertz in particular. I like that one, especially these days because um, 10 meters is coming in pretty good and um, pretty standard now. It seems to be pretty frequent. Um, the bands are in good shape, so so now we're at 26%. It's going through its thing. I'd love to do um, a quick video of this, but um, we're going to let it go to show you exactly how long it does. So now you can see over here that the radio is not really doing anything. It's um, This is sending the information to the radio. The radio is just in a stagnant position, but what you will see... Typically when this gets done is this will flash and then it may change the memory channel that you're on or whatever um, to show that uh, the um, sending the uh, memory to there has stopped. And then like I said, we'll get prompted over here to um, reset the radio, turn it on and then turn it, or turn it off and then turn it back on and then everything should be good like I said before. So. So far, so good. Um, like I said, though, um, one of the more complicated radios to um, navigate through with the menus and everything, even though it has a lot of information on there. And see, there you go. Now I'm getting close to the end of the program that's getting in there. And, and there you go. And there's the prompt. It says to turn the FT991A off and then back on again to complete the process. So we'll go over here. Turn that off. Wait a second. I always like to wait one or two or three seconds. I count one, two, three, by the way, in my head. We'll turn that back on. Then we'll come over here and select OK. Now that should be that. So let's go to memory and let's go over here. Yeah, and see, so, okay, so here are my memory channels down here. Uh, uh, you can see that 1, 26, blah, 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 so let me do this. Uh, so... Again, some kind of, like I said, I'm just getting used to this radio, and it's, um... It's interesting, for sure. There we go. Okay, so my memories are there now. So, I'm going to go up here. And I don't know what was going on there. I'm not sure why um, it did what it just did. It, there was no reason for it. So, okay, so I got a tone on this one now. So you can see right there where it shows tone and, or the DCS, and it says CTCSS, so that's good. So, I don't know. Oh, yep, so there's another one. Tone 147.03. I'm going to take a look over here. Uh, 147.03 has no tone, so that makes sense. Okay, so it did, see, so this time it did actually take. So this was the second time I put the same program in, by the way. And the first time I was not getting any of the tones, and this time I am, so. So 14721, that one goes through good now. Huh, so that's interesting. Um, like I said, this is the second time I've dumped this program onto that radio. But now I have all the tones and I'm able to use it. And the other night I was trying to get on to one of the nets and um, for some reason I couldn't do it. Um, and then I noticed that um, they had no tones. And then if I look over here, for some reason when it downloaded it, um, there was no tone. So if I go back here, 
This is the one that I dumped from the radio. You can see that um, all the tone uh, modes are off. Well, there's a couple tones on there. But if you look at the Pro 1, which was the one that I downloaded onto it, it's tone squats, tone squats, tone squats, except for the simplex frequency. So I don't know why I took... Uh, this is the second time I've done it and um, I'm not sure why I took that way but anyways I wanted to show you uh, it's pretty simple to download the RT uh, system software onto your computer um, as well as um, once you you don't have to have your radio hooked up to make your um, key plug let's say you can um, put in all your repeaters and frequencies and everything and get that all done then save it go up here to file and save as and then give it a name and then when you come back you can dump your radio and your settings on there onto here and then um, and then you can re-upload it again so you can go over here now so if I go up here to settings I can go to radio menu settings and this gives you a bunch of the settings that are on your radio f for different things here's your display your scope for instance, general, um, your bandwidths and whatnot. This is stuff you can all uh, you can change as well. You can come over here to RXTX and change your settings there. It's got max power on the different frequencies and whatnot, um, and some other uh, parameters that you can change. Uh, operating mode. You can go here. Here's your AM single sideband CW data. You can do your high cut, your low cut, all your um, uh, filtering through there so that way if you do it on here and then you dump it on there then everything's all set and you don't have to go through the menus on there which does make it a little easier and then a group monitor I don't have anything set up here yet and we'll close this now I didn't make any changes so I don't care to apply the changes so like I said, the software is actually pretty easy. It's about $23, and all you need to do is hook up this USB cord to the radio. You saw how easy it was to dump it, and then to, you know, and then it's a waiting game, you know. And also, it takes a little bit to get all these programmed in, but when you do program them in, when you start doing offset direction and stuff like that, it automatically takes over. It gives you the 1 megahertz for your 6 meters and the 100 kilohertz for your 10 meters and the 600 hertz for your uh, uh, kilohertz for your 2 meters. That stuff's already in there. So once you hit the offset direction, it'll fill in your transmit frequency. It'll fill in um, you know, the FM and stuff. And then over here, um, you can put your name in. And then you got to choose your tone squelch and um, and then what the frequency of that um, is. And then, of course, there's a bunch of other settings over here if you need them. Like on the uh, simplex frequencies, I turned the amps on uh, to them just on the, the one amp. There's two amps on this, just like the FT710. And uh, several other uh, Yaesu radios, by the way. That's pretty common um, amp configuration that they got there. But anyways... Um, Hope you enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe. There will be more about this radio to come. I just wanted to give you um, a little overview of the RT system software and um, a little bit what's been going on with the radio. I've been having um, a lot of fun with it. So, KD2 ETP 73, all. Like and subscribe.